Well, up to now, we've been talking about configuration, but actually what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the first of the monitor options, which is monitor access points. And we'll see the access points that we have connected to the zone director here. Over on the right hand side, under the action menu, we can see a number of icons. So let's go through each of these icons and I'll explain what they are. The first is system info. If we click on that, it'll take a few seconds for the system to download and prepare a support file that's full of system information. So we'll just wait for one second for it to come in and we should see it pop in on the left hand side, the bottom of the screen. And there it is. So let's open it and have a look. And we can see this is a lot of text. We're not really going to be using this because there's nothing really in here that would make any sense to us. However, it might be useful for the support team. So it's very likely that if you have a support case open, they may well ask you to create a support file that you can send to them. So let's close that. The second icon on the list is RF info. If I click on RF info, We'll see the same situation again, that the zone director will take a couple of seconds to prepare a file, which will then be downloaded and appear on our screen. And here it is. Well, again, there really isn't a lot of information in here that's useful to you as the end user. So this is possibly something that you're more likely to use if you're working with tech support on a case. However, if you are proficient at Wi-Fi and you start to study and understand a lot of the information that really relates to how Wi-Fi works, then there could be some information in here that you may find useful. It's really an advanced subject and beyond the scope of this course, so we won't discuss that any further. The next icon along is the configure icon, and we can click on this, and this will take us to the configure access points and to the individual access point settings. Well, we can create settings that are specific to the individual access point. I think it's better to use groups, access point groups, and we'll look at that in a later section. Let's go back then to monitor access points. The next icon is Speedflex. With Speedflex, we can run both a downlink and uplink test to the access point. So let's choose, do we want UDP? Well, yes, that's the default, are we going to go down or up? Let's select both. This can take some time, so I will skip through and I'll just show you the relevant bits. Well, first of all, we see that the test is going from the zone director to the access point. Well, now that test is complete, automatically we now go on to the test that runs from the access point back to the zone director. Well, why would you use this? This is particularly useful if you have your access point connecting to the zone director over a WAN link. One of the problems that you can have is that the WAN link introduces latency and because the access point talks to the zone director using LWAP, LWAP can sometimes have problems with high latency over long links. It's in your interest to know how well the access point is connecting to the zone director. Well, it's now finished and we can see the downlink speed of 903 and the uplink speed of 461. And that's as we would expect, because in this case, my access point is on the same LAN as the zone director. Next up, we have network connectivity. There's a couple of tools here that we can use. One is ping and one is trace route. So we can ping to the access point from the zone director. And secondly, we can trace routes from the access point to the zone director. Well, in this case, we're not really going to get too much from this because, again, the access point and the zone director are on the same LAN, so it's not really going to be too revealing, but it may be something that you could find useful. Here we have the option to restart the access point. So if I click that, restarting will cause a brief disruption. Click OK to proceed. So I'll click and we can immediately see that the access point goes to disconnected and the action icons are shown uh, there's fewer icons available because the access point is offline. So I'll pause and I'll come back as soon as the access point is back. Well, after a short wait, our access point is now back online. The final icon is to join another controller. If we've got different controllers on the same network and we want the access point perhaps to go to a different controller to this one, maybe it's been adopted by this controller by mistake, we can click this icon. We get a warning that tells us that to join another controller will cause the access point to disconnect and we click OK. And immediately we can see that the status goes to blocked. So what does that mean for the access point? Well, the access point is now no longer managed by this zone director. So what can we do? Well, let's go up here to configure access points. 
and we can see really what's happened the end result the access point has changed its approval status to no which means it's no longer an approved access point so we can simply bring it back into this zone director by clicking allow now we did see this before when we did the registration process but let's go back to monitor access points and have another look there and we'll see that this green tick has now appeared. Well, this is always available for access points that have reached the controller and are trying to register, but we have the approval policy set to not allow auto approval, i.e. we have to manually approve the access points. So we could have done this when the access points first registered, but we in fact did it by going into configure access points and choosing allow. So we'll go back to monitor access points and simply I'm going to tick the allow button and we'll see that the access point goes from disconnected and again it'll take a few seconds to refresh and we can see now the access point is back and running. So that's an overview of the icons and tools available when we look under monitor access points. However, there are some more icons available. The first of those are when we have Mesh enabled, and they will appear here once Mesh is running. We don't have Mesh running yet, but I will show you those later on when we do have Mesh running. And the second set of icons is when we click on the access point itself, and then go down to Actions here. We'll see most of the icons that we saw previously, apart from the icon to join another zone director. And we also have two new icons. First of those is Spectrum Analysis, and the second of those is application performance. Well, we don't have any WLAN set up yet, so application performance isn't actually going to show us anything, so we will come back to that. However, spectrum analysis is something that works now, so let's click on that and have a look. When we go to spectrum analysis, we have the option to display 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. I'll leave that on 2.4 for now, and we have the additional option to look at channel indicators, the color bar, and the maximum hold. When the access point goes into spectrum analysis mode, it no longer performs as an access point. So when we select start monitoring, we'll get a warning telling us that, that enabling spectrum analysis will prevent Wi-Fi clients from joining the selected access point radio. Do we want to continue? Yes. We'll click OK, and then it'll take a few seconds for the access point to start to key in. And when it does, we'll start to see some data within the 2.4 gigahertz band. So I'll leave it for a second just for some of that information to come in. Well, here now we have some detail on the spectrum. And as you can see that the resolution is quite low. And this really isn't going to give you that much information. What we can see here is an access point on channel 1, an access point on channel 11. A bit of activity in channel 6, but it's not clear what that is. It's really no replacement for an enterprise spectrum analysis tool. However, it may give you some information that will help you out in an emergency. I'm going to click stop monitoring now and return the access point to normal function.